Hey everyone, it's Dana, your six figure virtual assistant coach talking to you today about something that everyone seems to have an issue with, and that is boundaries. I had an issue with it. Every, almost every person I know who has worked from home, we just don't know how to establish and set that boundary for actually working from home because we're so connected in a digital time. And many of us, we work on social media and you know we're scrolling through stuff all the time. So of course, email notifications come in and things like that. And we feel the need to respond. We feel the need to that we are going to lose our business if we do not respond automatically or like within a certain time frame. And this is honestly exhausting for us, right? This is absolutely exhausting. Why? Because first of all, we're stressed about the fact of we have to get this done. We have to be talking to someone. Second, we're exhausted because we have other things that we need to do. Going grocery shopping. We have to pick up the kids from school. We actually have to play with our kids or talk to our children. Um, And, you know, they need to eat every day. Who knew? You know, you feed them breakfast, you figure they're good to go, and that could be cereal and you never even touch it. You know, but these type of things, they're huge, right? And they have to be done. And then we, on top of that, now let's go to the end of the day and we're getting ready for bed and we are absolutely exhausted. And um, we feel guilty because we didn't take time for ourselves. We don't know what that is. And our families feel kind of left out that all of a sudden our businesses are more important than doing things with them. And none of us want to feel that way. And none of us started a business because of that. We never started a business to get into that sort of thing, right? None of us did. None of us started a business so that we would sit in front of the computer or spend our time answering emails and responding to things on our phones. So how do we set these boundaries from the beginning? First of all, the way that I first started was actually with time blocking. And I'm actually going to show you my screen and my calendar. And it's very different because I am traveling this week. I am heading back to South Carolina from Fort Myers, Florida. And if you know what happened this week, of course, it's Hurricane Ian. And I've decided that, you know, we'll leave a week early and go ahead and go back to South Carolina in Myrtle Beach, which of course was also hit with Ian, but not as badly. So it's just, you know, I went ahead and closed off my the rest of my week and I made adjustments. But let's go ahead and see how to time block. And I'm going to show you a couple things that I did. First of all, I want you to set your working hours. What are the hours you actually want to work, right? When do you want to work? Do you want to work from eight to four? And I want you to put an end time in there, right? I do not work past four o'clock. Sometimes I will go ahead and answer a few emails here or a few Slack messages. But beyond that, no, it is not my thing. I'm actually going to switch over. Let me switch over to a different calendar and share that one instead. Eh, nah, this one's colorful, so we'll go with the colors. So set your thing for, like I work from eight to four. On all of my emails, it says that I my office hours are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, eight to four. That's right. I do not have office hours on Mondays. You can see here, this was all canceled, but I have a call with Lily. That is our team call on, you know, that is our mindset call on Mondays. And so that is there. I have a call with Lori Ann at two. These are recurring things. So, but I do not have set office hours on Monday. Why? Because it lets me catch up after the weekend. It lets me go in and organize well, what's happened over the weekend. And we all know all emergencies happen at Friday at five o'clock. So, but I don't answer those. Sometimes I do, but it's not a priority for me. And it's not something I jump at. Um, because again, those are my boundaries. 
So what I do is here we have my time zone here. This is Lorianne's. And if I want to work, let's say at eight, I also know that I get up early at some ungodly hour. So from six to seven, I might write in here, answer emails and posts. And what I might do is actually change my coloring, more options, so that I know that it's something that's gonna make me money. These are my answering emails and posts, and I might do this every day from six to 7 a.m. Then I don't, I might go back and, you know, these are social media posts in case you want me to clarify that. But, you know, that's when I write, that's when I'm drinking coffee and I can answer things that do not need anything else. If they do need something else, I am a big person with task lists Google Tasks over here, I'll add those. They are on my phone. And so I'll set due dates for that. And it's a reminder why, because I am scatterbrained. I am absolutely scatterbrained. So I might do this and I might say that it repeats every weekday and done. Technically, I do not work at all on Fridays. Um, this is an exception this week, but whatever. But you know, so that's what I would do. Now I'm going to have a break between seven and eight. And now I'm going to put in here client work. I do not like to have a pretty color for client work. So I make it red. Now, I actually, if I'm working with certain projects and I'm working with multiple projects, I will actually delegate an hour per client and put their name in the spot. Why? Because I take my break and then say I have Steve's project. And again, we're gonna make it tomato, save. So I have those there. And I will go through and I will do this for every day. And I do this actually on Monday mornings. Certain things like the answering emails and stuff like that, that is done, you know, it's a recurring thing, so I always have it. So right after this on Mondays, what I might do from 7 to 7.30 is set weekly schedule. And I'll just save it. That one I would set every week. So I would go through and put in client work. Most of the time I know my calls by then. You know, I know the calls that I'm going to be doing and things like that. And I go from there and I decide what I'm going to do. So that's how you kind of set it up so that you know exactly what's happening. Now, one of the things that I do depending on the time, okay? Most of my people don't wanna to talk to me until after 11 o'clock in the morning. So on this one, you know, I might edit it to say that I am also available, that I'm free, so that people can still schedule calls with me. And I usually only do these like a couple of days a week. Um, and a couple of them. It depends on what I'm working on. And if I can't, like if I'm working on a deadline, I will actually make that so that it is not, um, that it's not free and it's busy because I'm working on a deadline. If I'm not working on a deadline and I can move it to a different time based on my schedule, like say I have it free and someone comes in and they schedule a call like this, I can move, Steve can move to 1.15 after lunch and that's okay, right? So I can move everything on my pretty Google calendar for where I need it. Say Steve's project, I want to move him over here. I can do that. So these type of things you want to go ahead and set up. Okay, well, Dana, not everyone understands this and my clients don't get it. Guys, it's in my contract. It's in my contract. It's in my onboarding. They see it four times before they actually sign with me. Actually, three, I think. They see it in my initial um, 
hi, these are the things that we do. They see it in my proposal. These are, this is how we work. They see it then in my contract. This is how we work. Then they see it in, when we start onboarding. So yeah, it is four. So they they see it repetitively and you need to do this. And every email that I send out has my hours in it. Now it doesn't mean that team members don't respond for me if it's needed. And it doesn't mean that I don't respond during these hours, but these are the hours I have set aside to work. And that is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, eight to four. On those days, I do have me time. And guys, you see that scheduled in here, right? Water aerobics is not going right now, either strength training, but I have those times blocked off. I put in their Zumba class. I've got another class that's going on. I mean, seriously, this is what I do when I'm in Florida. Why? Because that gets my brain moving. And I need something like that to help with that. So, you know, right now these things aren't going on. And of course, I'm going up back up to South Carolina. So they're not going to happen while I'm in South Carolina. So instead, what I would do is just block off the time. And let me go over to... So here's a different week. I can actually cancel this one now because we're not going to be here. So I can actually cancel. I am out of office. Doo, doo, doo. And I can repeat every weekday. And I'm gone until 1230. Actually, I would make that about 1030. 1030 to 1230 every day. Why? Because it's me time. It's me getting out there. And I'm going to tell you something. When people are looking at your calendar links to schedule calls, they don't know why you are not available. They just know that you are not available. They see the available times that you are there. And once you establish that, then they're not arguing with you. You also let them know right up front, I respond within 24 business hours. So if you email me or message me on a Friday at five o'clock, I am not getting back to you until Monday. Yes, sometimes I do get back to people. It depends on what I'm doing. If I'm playing catch up, like I probably will this week because I am driving back to South Carolina tomorrow and it's a 12 hour drive. So Thursday, I'm not talking to anyone because I'm probably going to be taking a very long nap after I wake up in the morning. Then Friday, I'm going to be playing catch up with some of the work that I need to do because we have solid internet there. I'm wired in. So it's a little bit better for me and it works easier. So these are some of the things that you need to do. We are all going to have those clients that do not understand boundaries. And let me go ahead and stop sharing. So what do you do when you have a client that does not understand boundaries? This is this one is a little bit tricky. Why? Because you have to keep reestablishing it. And if you do and they don't get it, then honestly, guys, it may be time to let that client go. For example, I've had clients in the past, they were texting me and messaging me, and I ended up having to block them. Why? Because they used, they were not using the correct methods of communication that I have set up. We have the methods of communication set up a certain way so that I can actually respond to people, that I can actually get in touch with these people in the correct fashion. Or if I'm not there, then Ann can pick up for me or Teddy can pick up for me and say, hey, this is something you need to take a look at or, hey, I can actually do this. So I don't really need to have, um, you know, whatever. And these type of things are so important. So people will sit there and they'll be like, you know, my client keeps doing this. Well, guys, if you do not establish that with them and I had to remind people constantly where honestly I set up an autoresponder to texts that said contact me through the approved method so I use keep and keep has a business line and um, I actually had to set that up where if you are a current client please contact me through our dedicated slack channel 
And then it says, if you're not a current client, please schedule a call or, you know, here's the website to whatever. It's got something like that going on. So those type of things for me are really, really important. It's setting it up differently. It's setting it up so that it's just you're establishing that you are there. People, yeah, people do it. They go to Walmart and they think that they're, you know, they should be 24 seven and a lot of them have stopped being 24 seven and they don't seem to understand that. Um, no, they're not. And they'll sit there and bang on windows um, to try to open the door. Well, what happens? Walmart doesn't open the door and say, okay, well, come on in, right? You need all because you are a one person business does not mean that you need to do that. There are other ways to go ahead and automate some of these simple processes in your business, such as setting up client request forms, setting up automations that let people, you know, like I have, if you want to set up a call with me, please fill out my call request form or fill out my call me page. I have a call me page. There's a lead capture on there. It tells me what you want to talk about. And then it takes you to scheduling a call at a point that you know you, you would do so. Um, some people, they totally ignore that. This is how you have to establish the boundaries. I had someone, I think it was last week, that you know kept they kept sending me messages. Well, can't you just jump on a call right now? No. I mean, I was in the middle of a hurricane and like, but that didn't make a difference. I sent him my call link. I said, go ahead and sign up here for a call and I'll, you know, and then we can sit down and actually have a phone call. And he's like, but you're avail you seem to be available right now, right? I would not work for him. Why? Because he had absolutely no stat. He had no understanding of the boundaries that I had set and why I had set them. So stepping away from that and stepping away from clients that work like that is can be huge so if you have any questions or if you want any help with this please let me know um i'd love to talk to you about it and we can see what we can do and i will talk to you later you guys have a great day give me a thumbs up if you've seen it or these new star things i mean they're like cool i'm like i like gold stars doesn't everyone like gold stars so all right guys i will see you later you guys have a great day